one of these days, I might start acting my age. Are we there yet? We're getting close. It's only 1,566 miles to go and only 26 more hours. The last 300 miles to Sycamus are just like some of the coolest scenery I've ever seen in my life. Everything just looks crazy gnarly looking. Like this is totally worth the drive right here. This is super cool. Yeah, it's getting me super stoked riding sick moose. I mean, I just like how the terrain goes from flat to straight up basically into really jaggedy mountains. We're gonna have a blast. After a 30 plus hour push north, we were definitely happy to check into the best western sick moose and get a good night's sleep. So we got to British Columbia a few days before our check-in at TKMP. Those first couple of days were all about getting our sleds dialed in and exploring the deep powder of the mountains. So British Columbia is definitely known for the amount of snow they get and with a great base and a fresh food of powder, we certainly weren't disappointed with the conditions. It's our first day here in Sycamus, British Columbia, and after a 20 kilometer ride up to the Owlhead Zone, we found the Alpine and ripped it up. One thing you should always do when riding a sick moose is to familiarize yourself with the locations of the trapper shacks. They can be a great place to eat lunch and when the weather takes a turn for the worst, they can get you out of the cold for a warm up. It's also a great place to run into other local riders and share information about riding conditions. After putting the sleds away for the night, we headed into sick moose to check out the local restaurant, Moose Mulligans. When you're ripping up the backcountry all day, finding a great local place to unwind is necessary. Moose Mulligans love sledders and can chat you up about riding areas and places to stay. They also have a wide variety of menu items to choose from for any type of appetite. I'm Colin D'Antonio here in British Columbia and you're watching Boondock Nation. Day two, we met up with Colton Green and a couple of friends. The lot was filling up, but in the backcountry, we knew we would have a spot all to ourselves.
We've been staying at the Best Western of Sycamus over the past few days. If you're looking for a place to stay, this should be at the top of your list. And it's only a few minutes from the parking areas that are used to access the backcountry. Upscale amenities at an affordable price. Surrounded by mountains with restaurants within walking distance, this is a centrally located place to stay while enjoying the Sycamuse backcountry. British Columbia is the most amazing place you may ever ride, and Sycamus is surely a magical place. But now we're on our way to CKMP. This all-inclusive sets the standard for what a backcountry experience can be. Welcome to CKMP, Carl. Dylan. Sure. Hey, how's it going? Colin. Hey, how's it going? Josh. How's it going? This is a shop, and this is kind of where all the magic happens. So, and we got some uh, cool summits, all 165s, because the snow's pretty deep out here. And these are the race sleds, so we'll be racing these at Jackson Hole and uh, have some fun. I mean, the love for snowmobiles and motorcycles and stuff really started from my family and, and my mom and my dad. And then in about 1985 or something like that, we started fooling around with some deep snow sleds or making deep snow sleds, you know, inch and a quarter paddles and, and cutting the tunnels and stuff. And then in 86 was our first trip to the mountains, or that was my first trip, and just fell in love with it instantly. And, and I just thought, man, there's no way that people would do that and not like it. Like, you know, it's such an addictive feeling. I don't know, that's the cool part. You don't think about anything else, you know, you just think about the powder and the scenery. Can't beat it. Floating around in the deep snow, I mean, people come here because the scenery, it's the people, it's the food, it's the experience. You know, and we just want people to have fun. It's the only thing that really matters. You might as well have fun while you're here and do it on a snowmobile in the mountains. So we just got done eating breakfast here at Carl Coosters and there was so much to choose from, pancakes, bacon, fresh fruit, and it was all ready when we woke up. Today we'll be going out with Rob Alford and we got about five to six inches down in the valley here. So up top, it should be absolutely amazing. Uh, for me, the most important aspect of guiding is avalanche training, safety, on, you know, knowing how to use your equipment and uh, making the right calls, taking people out into areas that are safe for them to ride. Especially from a guiding standpoint, I think it's really important to show to show people in the snowmobiling industry that it's it really doesn't matter how bad the snow is out there because you can have fun on a snowmobile doing things that are absolutely 100% safe, you know, or 99% safe, right? And being self-propelled with a snowmobile, there's so much fun stuff you can do that really the hazard is low. So when I start seeing things on the on here that are telling me or signs out even in the backcountry that things are unstable, I'm just steering away from it. You know, I'm gonna go find something else to do that's fun. And especially these days with how good the machines are getting, like they're so capable that you have to be savvy. You have to be conscious of what's around you, you know. But I really can't stress enough the importance of every day being on here, being active and, and really looking into where you're gonna go and what you're gonna find out there. You know, and to have a resource like this, just use it, end of story. You shouldn't be going out there without looking.
Man, it feels good to be back. Yeah. So we just wrapped up our first day at Carl Cooster Mountain Park, and man, is this place wired. When we first got here, it was a, it was a real eye-opener. We had, I had no idea to even expect a place like this. It's just incredible. Just an awesome place for everyone to hang out and do their thing. We've been a lot of places, and to be able to hang around people like Rob and Carl and all of the guides here is just really cool. The first day of dinner here was absolutely amazing, four-course meal, and I didn't, I didn't know you could actually dress up drumsticks so well. So day one was definitely an eye-opener. Rob and Carl definitely showed us around the really old growth and really steep terrain, but it was absolutely blower powder. I'd say my favorite line of the day was probably when we found some downhill descents, and with the fresh foot of snow, it was amazing. You couldn't even see when you turned. As far as places you want to come back to after a long day of riding, this is definitely it. Stay tuned for more Boondock Nation at Carl Cooster's Mountain Park. So I'm an avalanche survivor. I've been buried by a large class three with Alfred and a lot of people that are around. Being a survivor myself, it's <laughs> I'll tell you exactly what it's like to die in an avalanche and, uh, and all the cute little things you think about, like your mom, your dad, uh, your girlfriend, whoever else is there <laughs> in your head. That's all goes over your head. You don't care about your own death. You care about, you, you care about what you did to your family members. Sometimes we, I think as riders, promoting via social media and through these things, uh, you know, TV shows like this, like that's got to be changed in our culture. The fact that people are getting entry-level education and being okay. Okay, I know enough to do what I'm doing. I'm going to tell you right now, you don't. You know, if I leave somebody that watches this with a message that I push into my clients that I teach, what's above me, what's below me, what happens if it slides? If you can start answering those three questions at all times when you're riding out there, you'll start learning to manage it. If I give them any message, it's just get an education and then pick a quality education. Get off your wallet like, oh, it's too expensive. <laughs> Understand that the knowledge that's needed to do this sport isn't, isn't minute. Everybody involved, avalanche world or the snowmobile world, needs an open mind to learning how to manage the problem. That's where it completely starts. Uh, if they can adjust that mentality, then we're winning and moving forward. And I'll tell you what, like guys like myself or a lot of my riding buddies have learned is that nature don't care. So you should be humbled. You dig out a couple dead guys and you dig out your, your best buddy who's blue in the face and he's barely alive, it'll, it'll change you. If you crave deep, endless powder, then BC has all you can handle. We got our fill of the steep and deep. But no matter what your skill level is, CKMP has you covered.
So riding here the past few days has just been amazing. We've ridden with every single guide they have here. And uh, the first day, you know, we were dumped on with a lot of snow over the handlebars. Everything's just been incredible terrain we've never ridden before. So filming in the backcountry of British Columbia uh, really poses some new challenges uh, aside from Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, those kinds of places. Uh, the terrain here is so much more unforgiving as well as the weather. Uh, one minute you get a bluebird sky, the next minute you know you're socked in with clouds and snow. Um, but we really kind of uh, took that challenge head on and uh, we got a lot of great clips that I'm excited for everyone to see. Yeah, so on behalf of all of us, we can't thank Carl Coosters enough and it's time to go home. <laughs>